In this video, I'm going to show you three different ways you can blur a background in Affinity Photo. To start, I'm going to import the photo that we will be using. If you want to follow along, I will leave a link in the description. Now with our photo imported, we need to separate the foreground and our background. So to start, I'm just going to press Ctrl J on our background layer to create a duplicate of it. Then I will come over to the selection brush or you can hit W on your keyboard. And now with this, we are just going to select our subject here, as well as the foreground if you would like to include that as well. And to do that, all you have to do is click and drag. If you need to adjust the brush size, you can use the bracket keys on your keyboard. And then we just have to click and drag and make a selection of our subject here. So I will do that real quick. And your selection does not have to be perfect. As you can see, there's plenty of spots in here that are not being selected. And then, like I said, if you would like, you can also select the foreground as well. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect because now what we are going to do is come up and hit refine. Now we can adjust this selection. If you guys would like to learn more about this, I do have a tutorial on how to separate your subject from your background using this technique. But for now, basically all you have to do is kind of click and drag on the parts that you want it to readjust. And then you can use the different adjustment brushes as well. So for example, we can choose the background here and select parts of the background just like that and make sure we get all of that selected in there. Or you can always do the foreground as well if you have certain parts that are showing up that need to be part of the foreground. So like this part over here and just working with that as well. And then matte is basically just a way to tell Affinity Photo to reassess a certain part of the image. So this works really well on hair I find most of the time and it's really good about selecting that and making sure you get all of that covered. So now you just want to go through your photo like this and make a selection of your subject so that we can separate the subject from the background. So I'm going to do that quick and then I will come back when I am done. Alright, so I went through and made a quick selection of our subject here as well as the foreground using these tools. And you can always check your selection as well by using the different matte options here. So you can see I kind of missed a few parts up here. So we can select stuff like the background and just kind of readjust as needed. So you can take a look at the different preview options, but once you are done, all you want to do is come down to selection and then hit mask and hit apply. And that will apply a mask to our layer here so that this layer just includes our subject and the foreground elements. So now we have a layer with our subject and if we start to blur our background just like this, we might get parts of our subject blurring because it is still part of our background layer. So to fix that issue, all we have to do is make a copy of our mask. So we will hit control C on our mask and then come into your background layer and then just hit control V to paste that mask. And then if it doesn't paste properly like this, you can just drag it as part of that background layer. So then it will create a group and we basically have two layers with the same exact thing now. But with our mask layer selected on our background layer, all you have to do is press control or command I and that will inverse the mask. And so now you just have a background layer without your subject. And I can see that I missed a little part here, but that's going to be OK. And then we also have our foreground layer or our subject. And you'll notice that some of my selection wasn't perfect here because you can see some weird fringing around the edges here. But that's OK. This is just for the sake of the tutorial. If you want to take the time to really make the best selection that you can, you can effectively get rid of those issues. So now we can take our background layer here and apply some blur to it. So now the first style I'm going to show you is probably going to be the most used style because it is one of the best ways to simulate depth of field and that will be lens blur. So to add the lens blur, all we're going to do is have our background layers selected here, come down to live filters, click on it, and then we will come up to lens blur. And then that will apply the filter to the background layer here. And then all you have to do is basically adjust this radius here for how much you want the background to be blurred. Now you'll notice as we push this, you'll see the edges here kind of turn a little white as well as around where our mask was. So to fix this, all we have to do is hit preserve alpha. And then that will basically just ignore the mask that we have on our layer here. So now we can adjust this to our heart's desire and you can see how that blurs the background. And then as you can see, you have other options here because this is basically just a simulation of aperture. So you can have a different number of blades like you would have in your lens. You can curve those blades as well and you can mess around with these sliders to see how they work. You also have bloom options here as well so you can add some bloom if you'd like. I've never really found that option useful in this tool. But the main thing you want to focus on is just going to be this radius here because that will affect your background. 
So that is just gonna be one way. You can see the before and the after of how we did that. Just adds a nice subtle blur to the background and you can adjust it until you get to a point that you are happy with. The next method I'm going to show you is going to be radial blur. Now this one is going to be a bit more unique and interesting, and it does a pretty good job at guiding the viewer's attention, and it can be used to get some interesting effects on your photo. So to add a radial blur, we're going to basically do the same exact method. We're going to come down to live filters, and then come up to radial blur. And then with this, make sure you hit preserve alpha, just like we did with the lens blur. And then we can just adjust this angle here for how much blur we want. And you'll see you can kind of crank this pretty crazily here and get some really cool and weird looking effects. But we're just going to try and keep it pretty subtle here. And as you can see, it kind of really guides the viewer's attention towards the center of the frame. And the nice thing about this, you'll notice that my cursor is a little bit different on here. So if I click anywhere on this image, I can actually change the center point of where the radial blur is being applied. So if I want to guide the viewer's attention to her head, I can just make sure I have that part selected or we can guide it you know, back here in the background. It's really up to you where you want to put it. I'm just gonna kind of keep it behind our subject here like this. And you can see the before and the after of that effect that we have here. So this is another kind of creative effect where you can kind of get something unique and more interesting out of it than just something like a simple lens blur. Now I'm gonna delete that radio blur, and the last one I'm gonna show you is going to be zoom blur. So to add the zoom blur, unfortunately, this one you can't add as a live filter. So we will come up to filter, blur, and then come down to zoom blur. And now, like I said, how it's kind of similar to the radius, you also have the option to select where you want the origin or like the pivot point to be. We'll keep it behind her head here. And then of course you can adjust the radius for how strong you want the effect to be. Now this is another one where I like to keep it pretty subtle. So I will just bring this back a little bit and just kind of blur it right around there. I want the effect to be subtle, but noticeable. That is essentially the goal I'm looking for here. But either way, I hope you can see how these can be good for leading your viewer's eye to the subject or even just give a sense of motion in your photo. But with that, that is basically how you blur the background in Infinity Photo using three different methods. So experiment with these to see which one works best on your image. And thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great day.